Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFT Traders Espresso with me, Darius Nachauskas. Today is the 27th of March 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, last March uh, Friday, uh, March's last Friday, um, if you want to put it that way. Um, so yep, welcome to this uh, Friday's uh, recorded session, rec uh, more recorded morning video, uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So. The content we produce does not con constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then, uh, just before we jump in, as always, a uh, quick mentioning of our JVD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JVD Bank website um, and specifically our JVD research page, which we update as well on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jvdbank.com uh, and click on the research tab right there on the top. So now then, um, before we jump into the charts, uh, as always, it, as it now became kind of a small, small little ritual to see what's happening here um, in in the world in regards to the coronavirus. Now, this is the figure that was uh, sitting yesterday um, during when I was uh, doing doing my traders uh, tea time. So. Let me just quickly refresh it, and probably most likely we have surpassed already the 500,000 level. So let me just double check this very quickly. Um, so, yep, uh, we have surpassed the half a million uh, people globally infected. Um, and uh, the but the interesting part here is that the United States have surpassed by the amount of infected people, they have surpassed China. Um, now this is where it's becoming very interesting, and uh, um, as well, I mean, there are uh, there are some countries which are picking up the pace as well. Like for example, United Kingdom, uh, which kind of was still in the lows here, but started uh, quickly growing, and the. And looking at this fig bigger figure here, this table with the total deaths, I mean, you, as you can see, we have uh, now breached the 24,000 uh, death mark here. And um, Italy, of course, continues to lead the way. And uh, I mean, this is, of course, not the rankings where, where you would like to lead the way, but um, yep, this is how it is right now. Um, Italy is just a few, um, a few, <clears throat> amounts of infected people is a little bit lower than China and uh, but of course as you can see the the death rate in Italy of course is more than 10% uh, so so yep that's not good we're comparing to China for example uh, the death rate was around around three something percent so um, yeah you can see how uh, how um, the world how kind of you can see how uh, countries are prepared here and uh, let's say which which countries have uh, less um, let's say capabilities to contain to maintain uh, so to, con to maintain this virus and to not to spread further um, but um, yeah for now this is the situation Spain and Italy continue to lead the way here in terms of deaths. I mean, Italy is the number one here. Um, but, uh, yep, United Kingdom started picking up as well here, you can see. So, um, it, it, serp it kind of has risen um, in the rankings here of total con confirmed cases of coronavirus and also started uh, drifting higher in terms of death as well. So, yep, um, it's still kind of below, uh, just below France, uh, Iran, um, China, and uh, Spain and Italy. So, again, guys, something to consider something to keep an eye on um the us uh, for example has um around 1296 deaths so basically that's um yeah that's not not good as well so 
Anyway, guys, continue monitoring the situation, continue staying safe, stay indoors, um, or let's say minimize exposure to um, other people. And uh, yep, like I said, guys, the, the word here is stay safe. Um, now then, let's jump into the charts. Uh, quick mentioning of the FTSE 100. Now, I've looked at this one uh, for the whole week. I've been looking at this one, and basically, uh, you can see that we managed to travel uh, back to this. Uh, well, we managed to travel and test this downside line taken from the high of the 24th of February. Um, looking at the looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is currently balancing uh, just slightly below the um, the yesterday's close. Um, and uh, it's currently around the 5,750 territory, somewhere around, around here, guys. Um, in a way, we cannot really talk about any upside yet because <clears throat> excuse me the because we're still below uh, well we're still around this downside line and even though we have a little this little this little break here but the uh, the index remains above this uh, 5787 territory so <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so the big question here is, I mean, can this continue drifting higher? Can it this continue correcting to the upside? Um, for now, you can see that, like I said, um, this level here, the 5,789 zone, kind of is acting as a good area of, of resistance. Um, this is the lowest point of June 2016. Um, we'll continue monitoring that one. If we get a nice strong push above this level, then yes, uh, we will aim for some upside again, maybe going towards that uh, psychological 6,000 level or even going further north. However, for now, guys, uh, be very careful. In case this suddenly reverses sharply to the downside and drops back below the 5,500 level, now this is the level after which we could consider some uh, deeper extensions here to the downside. So again, but for now, uh, we're just going to probably remain a little bit neutral um, and uh, we'll be closely monitoring this 5,789 zone, which is the lowest point of June 2016. So, uh, yep, keep your eyes on this one. If we get a nice, good, strong push above it and uh, let's say if we have a a four hour candle close above this, then well, I mean, uh, a further acceleration to the upside could be possible. But again, for now, be very careful and because the markets are still very unstable. Um, the German DAX. Now here, uh, the picture is a little bit more uh, uh, positive. However, um, still, uh, as I've mentioned yesterday in my video, that we need to see um, we need to see a push above the 10,280 uh, territory first before we could consider some higher levels. You can see that <clears throat> the index got a hold up here near that psychological 10,000 zone, um, and uh, but as I said, we need to see a push above this uh, lowest point of 2018, which is around the 10,280 zone, and then yes, we will aim for some higher levels for now. Again, we have to be very careful. The uh, the cash index currently is balancing around this uh, the same uh, that 10,000 mark, uh, maybe just slightly below it. So yeah, guys, for now, uh, probably uh, be very careful because we are at a psychological level and now it's really unclear what's going to happen here. I mean, and we are uh, just slightly above this downside line, uh, especially cl clearly visible here on the on the four hour chart, which is slightly above this, but we are, we can see that um, it's still kind of below some of these key resistance barriers. So again, guys, for now. Um, it's a little bit unclear. For us to get a little bit comfortable with the downside, for example, we would like to see a drop below the 9,141 zone and only then um, target the downside here. But again, uh, we, uh, we are quite far away from here. So all this territory for us is somewhat of a neutral one and it's just very tricky and you cannot have a really clear picture right here right now. So keep your eyes on this one. And keep your eyes on some of these levels that I mentioned. So let's see how this is going to play out. Gold. Um, now, let me just jump back into a daily chart on this one. And uh, so yesterday we had a nice push higher. We've over managed to overcome this 1643 territory I talked about um, previously in my videos. And uh, uh, we managed to create a new uh, a new high for this week. But still, as you can see, the, mm, the commodity kind of drifted back down. For now, probably it might end the week unless something drastic happens today. I mean, it might just end the week here um, and uh, maybe 
maybe going into next week we could see something like this something of a correction here to the downside uh, a drift lower towards the 1575 territory and uh, if this all this area continues to hold then we could see another rebound and a push higher um, on in case in case this doesn't decide decides not to travel to lower decides let's say uh, to remain above the 1611 territory here this is what we're keeping close eye on because as you can see daily candles these recent daily candles keep breaking this one to the downside but still not closing below it so that's why this level here this little uh, inside swing high of, of 2nd of March <laughs> Um, could be a nice target to watch and uh, if we do get a drop below this and we do get see a, a close a daily close below the 16 11 zone then well we could consider a bit of a, a, a de, uh, like I said a move lower a little bit of a uh, a larger correction to the downside um, but as I said previously if this area holds we could see a nice rebound now in case like I said this doesn't go this way and starts pushing higher straight away um, keep your eyes on this barrier here this 16 uh, 43 45 zone roughly around here uh, keep your eyes on this one because if it's if it breaks then the next target for us could be and let me just adjust here one of these levels now the next target here could be for us this one here around the 1680 zone which is the high of the 10th of March and uh, yep we will target that one but as you can see slightly above that we do have that um, the highest the current the current we have to say the current highest point of March which is around the 1703 so uh, again keep your eyes on this barrier as well um, if we do get a push above it if we do get a nice uh, break above this level here this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, yep more buyers could just start joining in but again at this point in time it's also a bit of a tricky one right now on gold because uh, if it drifts lower and if it closes for example below the 1611 zone then it increases the chances of going for a deeper correction to the downside here and uh, then yep we'll keep on monitoring this this area area of support um, DXY so very quickly on this one um, so this is working in line with everything what I was talking about this week um, on, uh, when I was covering DXY uh, basically what I was saying that if this area continues to hold the 23.6 percent on the Fibonacci continues to hold and we could see a nice rebound and a push higher so if for some uh, for some time it was holding but what I was also saying that if it starts dropping below this all this territory here will be somewhat of a neutral one for us because for us to consider the downside lower levels we needed to see a drop um, below this level here below the 99.91 or the uh, 99.80 territory territory which is the 38.2 percent uh, retracement on the Fibonacci so for now you can see that this is exactly what's happening so we managed to drift all the way here below we had a nice drop here yesterday uh we we closed below this territory so and uh, uh, the um the the index the dollar index continued to drift lower and tested perfectly this 50 percent on the Fibonacci so you can see that it what a perfect hit we had here um that's basically around the 98.82 zone from which, it, as you can see right now, the index is rebounding. Now, don't get me wrong, we may see a bit of a larger correction here to the to the um, to the upside. However, uh, still right now we will remain somewhat bearish because uh, what we're going to aim here for is um, yes, we maybe we see we can see something of a correction here to the upside if it struggles to uh, push above the 99.91 territory here, which is the high of the highest point of February. Then we could see another round of selling here, potentially maybe drifting all the way here towards this uh, 200 EMA on the daily chart and uh, maybe even going for further declines again for now. Uh, yes, we are more bearish than bullish, but we could potentially see a bit of a uh, a correction here uh, to the to the upside and if it struggles to overcome the 90 99.91 zone then yep another round of selling could be possible uh, for us to get comfortable with the upside again we would like to see a push back above this territory right here so this 23 point uh oh not this one this 23 uh 23.6 uh, percent uh, retracement on the fibonacci let me just quickly adjust this again uh this has managed to managed to skew it um so um now then 
if we get a push back above this territory then yes uh, we will consider um, some upside again uh, but uh, for now for now you can see that the upside could be slightly off the table guys um, AUD USD now this is where it's coming in line with the dollar index so AUD USD is pushing higher it um, yesterday it closed above the that psychological 60 uh, 0.60 level and also closed above the 0 0.6009 zone so the one that I've talked about a lot uh, recently uh, this is the the lowest point of 2008 and let me just jump into a monthly there we go this is the one that I'm talking about so the um, the pair managed to close yesterday above the 0 0.6009 level um, now for again also what I've talked about this week is that keep your eyes on the monthly candle because if the monthly candle stays above the territory and closes above the territory then yep in April going into April we could see a bit of correction here to the upside however if by any chance this somehow sells off and drifts uh, back below this 0 0.6009 level and and or even or even better falls back back below the uh, psychological 0 0.60 level now this is where it could turn out to be ugly for uh, for this pair and uh, yep further declines could be possible so that's why all eyes are on this right now guys uh, don't uh, remember that we still have a couple of days left in uh, uh, a couple of trading days left in March so yep continue observing this uh, very interesting pair uh, USD CAD now uh, here yesterday I talked about this one and uh, basically what I was saying that if we stay here and during my traders tea time the the pair was back it broke this this key area of support but it was quickly back uh, was pushing trying to push back above it um, but and it was basically bang on on this highlighted area so what I was saying that if we get a four hour candle close at least below this territory then yep further declines could be possible now this is what happened so we had a nice drift lower um, the pair uh, drifted all the way here towards this 100 EMA here on the four hour chart um, currently you can see that the the rate is balancing just uh, slightly uh, on that line um, however if it decides to correct a little bit higher um, as long as it remains below this highlighted area below this 1.4145 territory then yes we could we will aim for another round of selling um, now the good target for us right now is around this 200 EMA on the four hour chart which almost kind of coincides here or well, actually is, is a little bit higher than this key other key important level that we're keeping close eye on which is around the 1.3726 but first what we're gonna target here is that 200 EMA on the four hour chart so in a way guys long story short if the pair continues to balance below this 1.4145 territory then yes uh, we could aim for another round of selling if by any chance this climbs back above it and closes at least a four hour candle above the 1.4162 zone now this is where uh, we could maybe aim for a bit of a uh, a larger correction here to the upside because don't get me wrong the reason why I'm saying this correction because it's, we're still below this downside line and uh, still the the whole downside scenario would be the preferred one um, but uh, in the very very short term uh, we could see a bit of a, an upside here so but we would need to see at least a four hour candle close above this 1.4162 and then we could aim for that um, as I said uh, this larger correction to the upside um, GBP JPY so um, here an interesting situation um, we managed to of course break this downside line taken from the um, the high of the 26th of February um, in a way we can actually start getting rid of it right now because it's it was a little bit of a tentative one we did get a drop lower here a test uh, of uh, this uh, downside line from above um, from which it kind of trampolined here and uh, the pair kind of moved higher what we're gonna focus on right now will be this upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of March so let me just quickly put this one on the chart this is where we're going to be keeping a close eye on and also previously I talked about this 134.32 territory roughly around here but as you can see um, probably this is going to be the more important level to watch the 133.38 um, that's basically this barrier that continues to keep uh, the rate lower uh, this week and uh, 
you can see that we yesterday we did get, have an attempt to overcome this uh, this line uh, yes and we did so but um, the, neither of the four hour candles kind of closed above it so that's why we're gonna uh, keep an eye on this barrier here if and especially today as you can see that we're very close to it now if we get a nice four hour candle close above this then uh, yes we will aim for some higher levels we'll aim again for the same level that I had here previously this this 134.32 zone uh, but still the better target for us will be this 200 EMA on the uh, on the four hour chart um, after that we'll take it from there uh, if it if the if the pair decides to accelerate further then uh, the next potential target could be around here around the 100 137.21 zone that's basically the high of the 10th of March so keep your eyes on this one in terms of the downside, previously I had this level here, the 126.55 is the more comfortable level after which we could consider the downside, but given that we have shifted a little bit more to the right and to the upside here, yep, what we're going to do here is now we're going to lift this and uh, it, this is the area that we're going to be watching, the 130.43 zone roughly around here, that's going to be our uh, level after which we could consider uh some 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 further declines again but for now the slightly more uh slightly more likely scenario is more to the is to the to the upside because we are forming somewhat of a uh like a ascending triangle here uh according to all the ta rules this tends to break to the upside but again we need we need that confirmation break first before we get we could get comfortable uh with uh, further acceleration to the upside uh gbp euro now it's uh, it's just the opposite of your GBP, but um, here you can see that yes, euro uh, is kind of uh, although the euro is on on a rise, uh, but it's only only on a rise against uh, some other currencies, some other major uh, currencies. However, not against uh, the British pound. Here you can see that the pound is kind of leading the way here in this little battle between the, uh, the between themselves here. So um, yes, it is also trading above this little short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March, uh, but it still remains below the below this key area of resistance near the 1.1110 zone. So what we're going to do here is we need to see a break above this. I mean, basically, it's the same story as we had here uh, with GBP yen, where we need to see that confirmation break of the upper side of the asc possible ascending uh, triangle here. And then, yeah, we could consider higher levels. For now, uh, you can see that, um, yes, we are still stuck here. And uh, in a way, don't get me wrong, it still could uh, drift a little bit lower here, maybe test this upside line again, and then maybe rebound and push higher. But still, long story short, we will target this little t area around, um, let me just quickly put this one on the chart, this, this little target here, the high of the uh, 13th of March, and that's roughly around the 1.1305 zone, which also almost coincides with the 200 EMA on the four hour chart. So this is going to be our main target for now. Um, but like I said, let's see, we need that confirmation break first before considering some higher levels. Um, in terms of the downside, well, pretty straightforward, similar story like with the GBP JPY, we need a break of this upside line. And ideally, we would like to see a drop below this level here below the 1.0780. Um, and only then we will uh, target some lower levels. <clears throat> Um, but again, for now, it seems that the uh, the downside could be slightly off the table unless it's uh, this little correction that I was talking about towards this upside line from which it could rebound and push higher again. And finally, Euro USD. So good performance. Uh, this is what I talked about yesterday. However, as you can see, this uh, pair didn't really quite go for a bit of a correction. It, it just continued to travel higher. Also, something that I've mentioned that uh, I've mentioned about this level, the uh, the 1.0990 uh, 1 that uh, this one right here that I talked about yesterday that if we get a push above this, then yes, we will aim for some higher levels because especially if it also climbs above the 200 EMA on the four hour chart. So the pair uh, drifted all the way here towards our other target near the 1.1045, uh, which is the high, which is the high of the 18th of March. 
and also managed to overshot it and reached the area around here near the 1.1087 zone from which it, as you can see right now it's kind of correcting lower um, now don't get me wrong we could see maybe a bit of a correction here back towards this 200 EMA on the four hour chart so basically this little area here is a perfect one for um, for a nice potential bounce here. Um, so if we, for now, like what we're gonna be looking at here is a potential drift lower, maybe a quick test of this 200 EMA, and then a rebound and a push higher. And But for those who are more on the cautious side, what you could do is just wait for a clear break above this 1.1087 zone, and uh, then, yep, we could start aiming for higher levels because this would confirm um, a forthcoming uh, higher high. And, uh, yep, uh, yep, we could start aiming for these levels like the 1.1237 zone or even uh, higher. Slightly below that, there is a little target here as well, which is the 1.1189. I mean, that could be our first little target, actually. But, um, again, for now, guys, um, yes. If we get a push above the 1.1087, which is uh, which is um, this morning's high, then yes, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and uh, yep, higher levels could be met. But again, for now, uh, it, it seems that we could see maybe a bit of a correction here to the downside, and let's see if we can get something like that. And like I said, this area here could be a perfect one to watch um, for uh, for a nice rebound. This area around the 200 EMA on the four-hour chart. Now then, uh, previously uh, yesterday, especially, I was talking about this area, this highlighted area, as a potential uh, breakout point four uh, after which we could consider the downside but given that we have already moved here a little bit uh, well a little bit north um, we'll lift our uh, area here the potential breakout level to the that uh, previous previously which acted as a good area of resistance uh, this 1.0888 zone and if we do get a drop below this then yep we will aim for some lower levels for now any move lower could still be seen as a temporary correction especially if the, the the rate continues to balance above this upside line. Uh, but if this upside line gets broken and we see a, the rate falling below the 1.0888, then yes, uh, further declines could be possible. So keep your eyes on this one, guys. Right, okay, um, I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for sticking around and kind of watching this video till the end. Um, as always, guys, uh, catch my video, my Trader's Tea Time, 14.15, uh, or should I say after 14.15 GMT. GMT time and uh, yep uh, we'll have a look at some some of these instruments uh, some new ones and we'll see how the market is kind of preparing for uh, the week week's close and it will be very interesting to see so um, thank you very much guys stay safe and uh, have a wonderful trading day bye bye